Now, I'm sure you can remember me saying in yesterday's video when I was putting this into the uh, airbrush that it seemed awful thick. Well, it was. I've thinned it out. It's probably, uh, I'm guessing, maybe 40% uh, thinner and 60% of, you know, the way it came from the store. Now we're going to try this again. I'm just going to do a, a little narrow s swath here. This time I'm going to fold it around underneath so we don't need to worry about the spray getting underneath. What, what happened before uh, yesterday was when I was when I was turning it like this it was prying the cardboard or the paper up from from the edge there and it got underneath. Pretty sure that's what happened. Anyway we'll just do this one little narrow spot here. We won't worry about over spray getting on anything else. There's a little bit of isopropyl still in this thing. Oh yeah, that's a lot thinner. I've reduced the uh, the pressure, by the way, uh, down to uh, 20 pounds. That should have been another clue. We had to increase the pressure up to 30 to get it to spray. Okay, we'll just give it a just a quick little spray here. I don't think I'm even going to... We'll take a little look at this later, but I'm still not really what you would call happy with this flat clear. Yeah, I just wanted to do another test with a thinned out, see if it was any different, but I'm not noticing a whole lot of difference here. Now there's one more thing I want to try here. And, uh... That is, I did not use a, try it with a brush. And I also want to see what does this stuff look like. Um, you know, if I look at it through the microscope. Now, I'm not going to bore you with that, because I, I know there are people that just absolutely hate it when I use a microscope. However, yeah, I'm just going to take some of this flat clear, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brush it on. Well, I don't have too many places that are what you might call pristine. I'm going to just brush it on this one right here. This is the place that we had just sprayed on a little while ago. And um, then so we'll be able to compare this one to this one. I wish they were side by side, but they're not. Looks like I got dust on this already here. Now what I've done here is using the brush, I painted the center of the glass slide and that area that's on the left hand side there you can see it looks a little bit different to the one on the right and uh, yeah I thought I was recording it but when I went to turn the uh, record off I was actually turning it on and all I've got here is a whole bunch of me just talking to myself <laughs> now I realize that I've started my time lapse a little bit late I should have you know maybe I should almost redo this but um, yeah, it's starting to dry. You can see it getting rather hazy there. Well, that's the whole idea, is to give it the flat look. Um, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I'm just going to use the uh, dryer here at a low heat. Okay, if you're wondering what low heat was, well, it was a 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, it might have been a little bit too warm. A little bit sticky at least on the paint. The glass slide seems to be dry. Now this one over here, that's the clear that we sprayed yesterday. And this was the flat clear that we sprayed yesterday. Then we had this 
swath here that was bare and we just sprayed this center one here a little while ago and then with the brush I used I did this one right here just so that we know this is the one that we just brushed what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn a light on from the back so we get a reflection Now I'm just going to rock it back and forth here so that the reflection will change. Okay, I know that was as thrilling as watching paint dry, right? Okay, let's take a look at the glass slide. I think it'll probably show up a little better. Okay, this is the flat clear. We only did the flat clear in on the slide, so it actually came out not too bad. Now when I put our glass slide in front of the printing there, what is it that you're noticing? Besides the fact that those slides are made in China. Now it's as plain as night and day almost to me. On the left hand side it's sort of fuzzy, kind of out of focus, uh, whereas on the right hand side it's nice and sharp. Um, well, I don't know, do you want this on your model covering up the detail, I mean the fine detail, making everything fuzzy? Not me. So you go on YouTube and you can see where somebody has done a plastic model of maybe a Oh, a 148th scale model plane, or maybe even larger. Say a larger one. I think they would be like say a 124th. Anyway, and, and he's done a beautiful job. He's uh, you know done highlighting the the panel line highlighting and the the rivets and everything are standing out. And he's done a wonderful job with the weathering, and it's sitting there. Maybe it's in a bit of a diorama so that it's. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it looks in place, and at, at first it almost looks like a photograph. And then you, uh, I mean, a photograph of the real thing. And then you, you start looking at it. And you, when you're looking at this plane, yeah, everything is just right, except it has this look like it was sitting outside in freezing rain. It's got this sort of glaze all over it. Well, that's clear coating, and to me, to my thinking, that spoils it. Uh, I do you remember the uh, reveal on the Bismarck that I did about a month ago? I thought I thought that looked okay, and if I was to clear coat all that, um, I think that would really spoil it. That now that's my thinking. It's just my opinion. Um, I'm I said a couple episodes ago. I think that clear coating is. Is, is overrated and, and I think it is. I think it's a case of people are saying uh, after you build a model you gotta clear coat it. Well yeah the reason being is it it protects the paint. Well um, uh, don't let the kids play with it. Uh, the, somebody else will say yeah but it helps to pr prevent it from fading. Have you ever tested that? You know my uh, Titanic and Lusitania down in the workshop, they're like 40 years old. I'm not noticing any fading, except for where I used a felt marker to do the railings. I used a brown felt marker to do the tops of the railings. Well, that, that faded after about a year. <laughs> uh, you can sort of still see it's a little bit brown, but it looks more white than anything. But anyway, I'm, I'm starting to ramble here. I think that maybe clear coating does have its place. But its place isn't going to be on my ships. So, uh, yeah. But once again, that's just my opinion. Somebody else might like that glazed look. I don't. Now, you should remember that yesterday I was saying that if I put this sign in behind the uh, rigging, that possibly the letters are going to distract from being able to see the rigging. And I was listening to myself say that when I previewed yesterday's video, and I thought, well, who says it has to be in the center? Why, why can't it be, you know, over the bow or, or even the stern? It, it doesn't have to be in the center. Um, and, and in that case, if it's going to be 
uh, over over the bow, it can it can be instead of having it long, it could be lengthways sort of, and that way it would sort of make a lot more sense. You know, builder, so and so, and then would say launched, and the date, and then sunk, and the date, and so on, all the all the way down. I'm gonna I'm gonna try that and see how that looks. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's let's go back to the model table. <clears throat> Something else I want to talk about: clear coat. Yeah, I thought for sure I was going to be getting comments, people telling me to put it off to the right or the left. Anyway, I also got a lot of comments about clear coat, and uh, I, I just um, I don't know if you know the notice, but at the beginning of my every episode, there's a little. Uh, description that tells what the video is about and it's one of the things that it says is this is not a tutorial I'm not trying to teach people how to paint or make a model or anything like that it's uh, it's, it's just the way it's going for me and this is what I found uh, got, I got a comment from from one person who said uh, he, he does the clear coat two or three times so then I, I checked his channel to see, you know, how he, how he does it. And of course this is what I saw. And uh, it would be really nice if some of you people that, that are making these suggestions, you know, put it, put it on YouTube and, and show how you do it and uh, how it comes out for you. Anyway, uh, I was editing out the scene just before this in the computer. And I'm sitting there, and the phone rings. Not this one, but the one by the computer. Yeah, so the call display comes up. Cellar dweller. And I think, okay. So I answered the phone, and I said, finally. That's so instead of hello, I said, finally. Anyway, Carrie was on the other end, and he says uh, something about he's got a, a big box there for me. Came in about half an hour ago. Much the same kind of conversation as we had back when the Bismarck came in. Anyway, I told him I'll pick it up at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So, tomorrow morning, we'll go and we'll pick up the, uh, the hood. And, uh, yeah, finally. In the meantime, thanks for watching. All been well. We'll be seeing you tomorrow. Well, I got a big mess to clean up here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I had this all cleaned up and then I sort of gave up on it. Anyway, see you tomorrow with the hood.